Okay, well, we have a full house. Everyone uh, is in attendance. I would like to uh, say welcome everyone. Today is the, the uh, first Thursday of April and this is the uh, Rotten Board of Health public meeting. And uh, I would like to, before I uh, pass on to the chair uh, of the board, I'd like to inform everyone that this meeting is being recorded. That's the procedure, that's the standard. So everyone will be recorded um, uh, for the racket. So with no further ado, uh, let me also mention that we have Dr. Craig Andred, the uh, chair um, of the um, Board of Health presently, and Mr. Fisk, myself, you know, Mother's Year, director of the uh, Health Board of Health, um, Rachel uh, Siever, uh, interns from Bridgewater State University Public School, uh, Health, um, Inspector James Doucet, and we also have Brockton Community Access. Someone should be there with us. Uh, most likely uh, is Mr. Mike uh, Simmons. We also have Caitlin Haley. Um, I would say that she represents one of the uh, vendors. Prestige. Prestige, okay. Okay, with no further ado, I will um, pass the um, meeting to Dr. Craig Andrade. Thank you, Dr. Montessor. Welcome, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, first on our agenda is um, to approve the minutes from March 7th, uh, 2024. Do we have a motion? Uh, any questions or any of that? The question is like, make um, a motion, make a motion. Seconded. Is, is read. Yep. Seconded. Um, the minutes are passed and approved. Uh, next um, hearing. So um, um, some issues around tobacco permits, uh, starting with the Brockton Food Mart. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. All right, good afternoon, um, Dr. Andrade, sir. Um, if I may introduce this item, there was a tobacco violation on the 23rd of March of this year. It involved the sale of a tobacco product to a person under the age of 21 years old. Um, the offense took place at Brockton Food Mart, which is at 1293 Main Street and a tobacco product was vended to a person who is under the age of 21 years old. That to our knowledge, this is the first offense within 36 months for this vendor um, so that past practices have been levied that for a first offense within 36 months involving the sale of a tobacco product to a minor a three-day suspension is necessary, and a $1,000 monetary fine has already been levied upon the vendor. Sorry, Mr. Doucet, Inspector Doucet, is the uh, vendor represented here today? Yes, to my knowledge, the person um, named Mike with the moniker Brockton Food Mart is the proprietor of that location. Okay. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, Dr. Andre, you on, on mute. <laughs> Sorry. Um, 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 Mike, um, would you be interested in offering any comments? Yes. Uh, yes. Please do. So uh, this is a, a honest uh, mistake by my employees and this um, in 22 years. And I just want to know the timing and date of the uh, date. Is, uh, I know the date, but what about the timing? I, I can provide that information to you, sir, for training purposes. 
So if you if you can save me the time so I can check my camera and I can give the responsibility to my employees next time. Yes, sir. We can provide you with that information. We can provide you with the manner of payment that was rendered, what article was purchased, and a description of the clerk. Okay. Any other questions? So, so as per uh, you told me that this is the first uh, offense since last uh, uh, three or four years. So, that is correct. Within 36 months, yes, our records do not reflect that you have had any other violations. Okay. So uh, all, uh, no more comments. Okay, thank you. So uh, any questions from um, anyone else? Um, George? No, I just, uh, it's nice that he came at least, to, you know, said his piece. But unfortunately, the way things are now, if, if, we've, if we have no say and what is done is what's done. And you know, like it, like I said, uh, said before that you know, before since we have the new new ways there, they're more you know, they you've got to get to your employees and tell them because people are going around now. Where years ago it wasn't as you know enforced as much, but the 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 gentlemen that we have working for us now, they're doing a great job, and there's more enforcement. So you know, the, the word's got to get out. So the uh, the vendors know this. And, and like I said, Craig and I, we've got to, you've got to teach your employees that you've got to go by the rules now because it's, it, it's being enforced as, as strongly. So um, do I have a motion that we move forward for uh, a three-day suspension and um, uh, await the, the payment for the $1,000 fine? Yeah, we make a motion that we you know, follow the rules and, and do what's need to be done. Second that, and so this passes. Um, uh, Mike, thank you for your your um, attendance here. You're, um, you're welcome to stay or you're welcome to, to have the rest of the evening to yourself. So can I ask you one question, sir? Go right ahead. So uh, you give me the days for the day when I have to close or I have to decide. If I may, Dr. Andre, um, yeah, yes, um, we will forward to you documentation that stipulates the days that you will be prohibited from tobacco sales. Okay. So you'll get, you'll receive follow up communication with all the details that you need to know. Okay. When should they expect them, um, Mr. Desat? By the end of the day tomorrow. Okay, great. Okay. great. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And the next one is Prestige Car Wash, located at uh, 245 North Pearl Street, Rockton. Uh, yes, doctor, that is correct. That also, to our knowledge, this is the first offense within a 36-month period. The sale also involved the sale of tobacco product to a person under the age of 21 years old. And I've already been in contact with Caitlin Healy, who, to my understanding, is their licensing and compliance officer in regards to the time and details of that transaction so she could forward it to her employees for training purposes. Wonderful. But again, this being a first violation within 36 months for this establishment, the um, precedent that has been set is a three-day suspension of sales and a $1,000 fine, which has already been levied. Wonderful. Um, and um, Ms. Healy, is there any, any questions or comments you want to offer? No, I just wanted to let you guys know that we did go over the situation when James gave me the information. So I did watch the cameras. We did have a company meeting to go over everything. And we are installing a scanner next week that will force us to scan every employee's, I mean, cashiers will have to scan every customer's ID for any type of sale of tobacco. That makes it um, mistake proof. That's um, yeah. congratulations. Thank you. So hopefully by Tuesday, it will be all installed. And we do do our own secret shops too. We tried to prevent this as much as possible. And it's all about retraining. Well, That's again, it. I appreciate you taking this seriously and and um, supporting your your employees in the ways that make sure that they can do the good work that they need to do. Any other thoughts or comments before we finish? I just none here. 
I just wanted to, do we have to, the three-day suspension, do we pull all the tobacco down or can we like cover it up? Um, you... Yeah, I'll give you more guidance, but the city regulations do call for the removal of all tobacco removal. products from the facility. Okay, that's all I wanted to know. Um, so thank you, Ms. Seeley. The, um, uh, do I have a motion to move this forward and approve um, moving yep. forward? Make a motion that we approve it. Seconded. Um, so so approved. Um, and then finally, Warren Ave um, Smoke Shop. Cor correct, um, Chairman Andrew. I don't see any person here to represent them. However, they have been notified um, of the hearing and of the offense. Um, so in this case, there's contrast to the previous two that to our knowledge, this is the third offense within a 36 month period. This sale involved the sale of a tobacco product to a person under the age of 21 that a $5,000 fine has already been levied in accordance with state CMR. And being that it is a third offense to our knowledge within 36 months, the precedent has been set to warrant a 14 day period of suspension. And, and as we've learned from previous uh, engagements, that is, um, it is not about whether or not it is, this is the, this is the standard and we move forward with that. Um, any questions, George? None here. I just make a motion that we, you know, do what the procedure tells us to do. Make sure they're notified and all of that. They understood that they could have been here if they wanted to. Um, um, any any comments about the kind of, because uh, I imagine you've had um, engagements with them in the first and second uh, infractions. And um, do you see them making any changes for improvement? Uh, well, I must say that at that time, I was not involved in tobacco right. enforcement for the city. However, those two previous sales, um, which took place, like I said, within a 36 month period, indeed, one of them taking place in May of 2023. Um, I think there there is a pattern of lack of ability to enforce compliance. Mm -hmm. um, perhaps they should uh, get Miss Healy as a consultant or something like that. Just kidding, um, Caitlin. That's a good one. <laughs> Well, um, so um, do I have a motion to move forward with uh, the plan for a 14 day suspension and um, a $5,000 fine that has been already um, imposed? I make a motion that we proceed as we're supposed to proceed. <laughs> Second and then that is approved. Thank you. Anything else, James? That, that is all, Mr. Chair. We can give you your evening back. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you for your service. Thank you, you as well, sir. And you. Caitlin, uh, you're willing, you're willing to you're welcome to stay if you like, or you can have your evening back as well. Okay. Thank you. Have a great night. Thank you. You too. Bye. Bye now. Um on the agenda next is um the up no updates on the life science issue that is correct dr andre and uh, mr fist uh no update and um so that issue seems to rest at the um mm -hmm. at the uh, department of planning yeah um okay. and item, go ahead item five um latest um statistical, statistical data on covid Yes, I am happy to say that, yes, we're not really out of the woods altogether, but um, for the past two months, the numbers have been decreasing. Um, so basically for the last uh, uh, seven days, we have uh, registered 12 uh, COVID cases uh, and within the last 24 hours, two cases. So basically, this may be a false uh, pretense because we know that more people get infected, uh, but most a lot of people do not 
take the official uh, test right now that is recorded, that should have been recorded um, at the MAVEN um, system that DPH uh, puts in place. Uh, so many of the cases are tested at home and are not reported. So yes, uh, we, we on the um, downward slope, but um, we still have a good amount of COVID out there. So um, we continue to provide vaccination. The nurses are at the Shaw Center still uh, once a week, uh, Tuesday from uh, one to, to four. And also at and that also at all the clinics that we do, the help of our intern who will be departing, who will be graduating uh, this month. I mean, beginning of um, next month. So with her help, we um, have put in place a clinic to do blood pressure check, um, uh, blood sugar test, as well as height and health education, health promotion. So that project will carry will go on um, even as she departs at the end of this month. Well, I'll, I'll prom, um, suggest that we, um, given all the good work that Rachel has done, we double her pay. So twice as much <laughs> as zero. Awesome. Do I have to make a motion? <laughs> I <don't think> so. <laughs> um, um, is, uh, Dr. Montessori, is there any Thing that the Department of Public Health is suggesting that we change regarding dashboard, given the fact that um, the CDC has changed all the requirements in terms of uh, shorter uh, isolation and all those kinds of things. Uh, is there is there value in continuing to to uh, to take uh, these counts and and cumulative uh, data, recognizing that we're not capturing a significant amount of people that are testing themselves and not reporting and all that. Um, they do, DPH does uh, make some recommendations uh, of its own um, following uh, CDC. Basically, they do uh, provide a five day also, they adhere to the five day, but they do not require that people get tested um, before re returning to work. So basically, um, one um, major uh, issue is that they combine all three um, um, infectious diseases together, uh, flu, regular flu, um, uh, sensational um, um, infections as well, uh, as well as COVID. So the three, uh, so the, the protocol is, if you feel sick, it could be any of those three, just stay home. Okay. Um, and you can get tested also, and then come out uh, at, after five days. Um, but they do recommend that people can also wear masks, um, continue to wear masks, but they don't really, um, it's, it's um, recommended, but not uh, mandatory that people wear masks. But they do say if they do have, um, um, if they don't feel well, they may continue to stay home. I think one thing that may create, but I'm hoping that this doesn't um, hit the Board of Health too hard. Sometimes uh, um, when we had the pandemic, we had people, uh, employees who would call to say, uh, I need a letter to go back to work. But the business, sometimes a small business could not, we took it to mean that sometimes they could not afford having employees at home and then have to pay someone else uh, to do the job. So somehow Board of Health at one point was between the hard place and the rock. Uh, so I'm since COVID is down, I'm hoping that people can negotiate these th things themselves yeah. and do not blame um, um, Butterfell for anything. Yeah. Well, my, 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 what I was really asking is whether they, the, the Department of Public Health is still asking that we we continue to tally the data since it's again imperfect and and not capturing all. Is, okay. uh, so the question of whether it's necessary to continue to to gather the data. Yeah, no, this, this, I was doing this at, at um, my own discretion. Okay. Uh, we do have the wastewater sewer still being reported. So uh, that is ongoing. Uh, yeah. So um, it's up 
to our discussion whether or not we want to bring this up also because they do report it uh, from a different platform right now, different dashboard. So uh, they give the whole month um, and they compare it with the other municipalities. And so sure. we can just um, extract the um, Rockton um, statistic from, statistics from it. But um, uh, what we produce here, basically, it was just in keeping with um, us perform. Um, 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 yeah, and I understand. I, I think it makes more sense um, um, and is, is more informative if we just watch our waste wastewater tallies and see you know if there's any spike then we have an then we have an opportunity to consider what's going on in a different way i agree yeah we will we will decipher <laughs> great great um so we are on uh uh item number eight of uh, vaccinations you did i think you mentioned that didn't you yes we we do continue to vaccinate um now we do have uh, Pfizer because we had a series of uh, Moderna uh, that when that were questionable in terms of um, uh, liability or effectiveness because there was some issue with the date um, and exposure to higher temperature. So once that is done with a DPH, then we will have no um, um, uh, supply of Moderna, but right now we have only Pfizer, and also we are in the process of uh, relocating the um, Pfizer uh, refrigerator that has been um, hosted at the uh, high school. They remodeling that room there for um, more police and security uh, purposes, and uh, at this point, uh, the the um, Understanding is that the freezer will be relocated at the to the Shaw Center um, um, by the 15th of this month. It took forever to get that freezer here, so we should take good care of it. Yes, yes, I advocate very strongly so that they didn't put it where we would uh, it would lose power or yeah, being yeah. ineffective. Yeah. Um, item nine, uh, uh, TB cases. Yes, uh, we have significant number of um, cases that have completed the treatment. However, we have some cases that had to be extended beyond uh, six months and nine months. Um, of the two cases that we have provided uh, subsidized housing for, uh, one case will be extended toward um, through June, um, August this year. Uh, because there were other uh, comorbidity um, and that made the um, the um, treatment, the TB treatment more complicated. Mm. So, but but at the same time, we we had um, uh, patients who completed the treatment. We also have we also take up uh, some more cases. So basically, it's like we are at even skill. <laughs> 11, 11 cases. Uh Thank you. Uh, item 10, health promotion and public health education. Yes, we continue to uh, work with uh, different um, institutions. Um, there were two health uh, fair in, well, one took place um, in March with um, the lead agent was Brockton Neighborhood Health Center. The other one was also Brockton Neighborhood Health Center in the lead. Uh, mm -hmm. So both of them happen and we participated in them. We work with a uh, council on aging at the Shaw Center. We do blood pressure for them um, and other tests. Um, every first Monday of the month, um, we are working to continue our um, collaboration with um, Massa State Community College. Um, and I think we have something coming up um, before the close of the uh, semester as well. So. Um, we we'll continue to expand our work and uh, hopefully we will be able to uh, expand and do do some of those clinics that we have at the high rises, low rises. Um, to, we will expand them towards um, other, the larger community. Um, anything you want to say about any of the miscellaneous items? Uh, well, we 
we may have some leftover money based on the grant that we had from DPH to do to hire epidemiologists, community health workers. Um, the way that the grants come, um, they do have some timeline and how we hire. And so therefore we had some uh, delay hiring uh, the first epidemiologist. Um, and we have three months left, well, basically two and a half months for FY24 to finish. So we may have some left over, but um, if everything were within my power, I would have hire more community health workers uh, to cover different the different languages that we have instead of just hiring one, but the protocol is, uh, is does not always allow one to do um, things expediently or in a timely fashion. But um, we plan on continuing to work with DPH and see if they would allow us to hire also more um, uh, Cape Verdean, maybe one or two more Cape Verdean um, community health workers one in Spanish and one in Haitian, because with one, we do work, but mm -hmm. given the size of the populations, um, having two in each, under each language would be more beneficial and mm -hmm. would reach more people. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Um, we had an epidemiologist that you introduced at one of these meetings previously. Um, yes. Did he move on? He, no, he's here. He's okay. here with us. In fact, um, the reason why we have not brought to your attention the um, result for the public health survey is because the other epidemiologists didn't really um, do much in it. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the numbers, the number that we captured were uh, very skewed. And moving forward with uh, under 100 um, cases or um, surveys that have been completed would be um, uh, would have some bias. That's what we call simply mm -hmm. bias. So uh, we're pushing to get about 300 uh, people complete the survey. And once we have that, then the epidemiologists will be able to um, tabulate the uh, numbers. Good. Um, update <laughs> on um, the state of our hospitals. Um, so far, Breath and Signature is pushing to see if they would open up by June. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't received no other um, uh, update except what we have received back in January. Um, and so therefore, well, February, they did update us also. So uh, the last update was in February. Uh, as for Good Sam, um, I don't know. I probably, if everybody may have as much information as I have at the Board of Health. Yeah, it's Stuart that, is in a challenging circumstance and what that means for any of our hospitals, um, Good Samaritan and the hospital in, in um, what is it? Um, in Stoughton. Stoughton. Stoughton, yeah. yeah. Sinai. Yeah. And New, it is the one in New Bedford as well, I think, right? Yes. Yeah. There is, there are, I believe there are two in, in Boston, yeah. Connie, Connie, St. Elizabeth. Um, so it seems that yeah. all of them are um, in the spotlight. Yeah, um, to say the least. <laughs> um, I, uh, I, is, I, before we, we adjourn, there was, I, I received, a, a, I had a, an online conversation with uh, our colleagues at the uh, Brockton Neighborhood Health Center. Um, regarding our um, uh, opioid settlement money and um, the fact that we have really not used those resources in a way that, um, have you had these conversations with people like Allison Pinkover? Uh, no, I don't have it with her, mm -hmm. but I do have it with the other 14 municipal, other 13 municipal, largest 14 municipalities because yeah. We have a monthly meeting where all the uh, large uh, municipalities meet together to discuss it. Yeah. It's a bit peculiar in Brockton because Brockton, uh, the way that the money comes in, it doesn't come to the Board of Health or Board of Health has no say in it whatsoever. When I approach um, the powers that be within internally, 
uh, I found out that the money is allocated to the uh, law enforcement uh, pretend, uh, in the pretense that they do education and, um, and they do um, outreach. So um, that's where I am. And I also mentioned that to the commissioner uh, Goldstein, but I think Brockton has a way the, the, the structure, the, the, the city council, I, I think how they um, uh, decide on, on this um, is a matter that uh, beyond my uh, jurisdiction or purview. Yeah, I want to have a conversation with the mayor because I think I, that that raises significant concern when it comes to supporting those that have substance use disorder. The ability for them to feel comfortable working with police versus healthcare providers is a critical um, um, consideration. And the fact that we still, I mean, we have $1 million that we've barely touched and another million dollars that are, that is ready to come forward um, and a, an urgent need that hasn't been addressed in part because of this allocation that seemingly was misplaced. Um, I've had conversations with uh, um, Allison, who is the, the um, Director of Substance Use uh, Services at Neighborhood Health Center, as well as the um, De Department of Public Health, um, Deidre, um, um, who is the commissioner, not the commissioner, the Bureau Director of Substance Use uh, Services. Um, so there's a concern and I want to I just I'm saying this out loud because I think there's an opportunity to, to kind of have to have a broader conversation. Um, right. Other than that, um, any questions, Rachel? Thank you. Um, I think that that topic is super important. I like how you mentioned um, about the importance of like people that struggle with that issue. They're like comparing like the police op like their reaction to police officers and reaction to healthcare workers. I can, I definitely agree that it's important for them to feel comfortable. And if, if police have have a bad um, wrap in that community or any community they'll be they'll obviously feel more comfortable to have have treatment from healthcare workers yeah the 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 uh, um the the law enforcement frame is a is a reasonable frame in other um circumstances the history of kind of um substance use disorder and the challenge that addiction has nothing to do in terms of people's um direct um um behavior it is something uh, uh, literally an addiction and so um, I think it, again, it is an important conversation to have a broader, uh, in a broader way that allows for resources to be un, unlocked in a way that serve people well. So we'll move. I'll I'll, I'll follow up with um, um, you, Mr. Fisk, and um, and Dr. Montessor after I have some conversations internally. I'd like to have you do that. Being a father that lost his son to addiction, oh. I, I'm very very in, interested in something like that. Yeah, where well, you know it's it's probably not. I, I I don't think I've heard of a policeman that's you know helped people with addiction. Whereas I mean that's what the social workers and you know health aid people are for. And yeah. if that's money's there, that 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 should be definitely to, that it's definitely be. should be going to that a person that can you know professionally do that and help a person. And you know, and <laughs> I know it probably could have helped my son. Yeah, well, I'm sorry to hear that yep. for your loss. And yep. that testimonial could be a helpful thing if we have to have a conversation with with the yep. uh, uh, city council. Um, so do I have a, 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 a motion to uh, adjourn? Yeah, I make a motion to adjourn until next month. Second, and we will meet on May 2nd, Thursday. May 2nd. Uh, on May, yeah, uh, sorry, um, Mr. Chair, but... Um, Today is the last day uh, that I mean, uh, Rachel won't be with us on May by May second because her oh. she will complete her uh, internship um, in about two weeks, uh, and then she will prepare for graduation. So uh, we want to say thank you to Rachel for joining. Uh, her presence with us has been noted. Congratulations for upcoming graduation. Thank you for your service here. We're We've we've sent out a virtual cake to you right now. Hope it tastes good. <laughs> Take care now. Best enjoy your cele you. enjoy your your graduation celebration. Thank you so much. Have a good night, everyone. Take care. Thank Bye, you. everyone. Have a good evening. Yeah. Thank you Bye. so much for attending.
Thank you so much. Bye-bye.